If you get hold of two magnets and you push them, you can feel this pushing between them. Turn it around the other way and, it, and they slam together. Now, what is it, the feeling between those two magnets? What do you mean, what's the feeling between well, the two the, magnets? there's something there, isn't there? I mean, that, the sensation is that there's something there when you push these two magnets together. Listen to my question. What is the meaning when you say that there's, that there's a feeling? Of course you feel it. Now, what do you want to know? What I want to know is what's going on the between these two, bits, these two bits of metal. The magnets repel each other. And, well, then, what does, that, but what does that mean, or why are they doing that, or how are they doing it? Uh, you're asking. I, I must say, I think that's a perfectly reasonable question. Of course, to it's ask. a reason. It's an excellent question. Okay. Uh, the, but the problem that you're asking, you see, when you ask why something happens, how does a person answer why something happens? For example, Aunt Minnie is in a hospital. Why? Because she slipped. She went out and she slipped on the ice and broke her hip. That satisfies it, people. It satisfies, but it wouldn't satisfy someone who came from another planet and knew nothing about the... For example, you could go, well, why did she slip on the ice? Well, ice is slippery. Everybody knows that. No problem. But you ask, why is ice slippery? That's kind of curious. Ice is extremely slippery. It's very interesting. You say, how does it work? You could, you see, so you could either say, I'm satisfied that you've answered me, Ice is slippery, that explains it. Or you could go on and say, why is ice slippery? You'll notice in this example that the more I ask why, it gets interesting after all. That's my idea that the deeper a thing is, the more interesting it is. And uh, we could even go further and say, why did she fall down when she slipped? That has to do with gravity. It involves in all the planets and everything else. Never mind. It goes on and on. Now, when you ask, for example, why two magnets repel, there are many different levels. It depends on whether you're a student of physics or an ordinary person who doesn't know anything or not. If you're somebody who doesn't know anything at all about it, all I can say is that there's a magnetic force that makes them repel and that you're feeling that force. And you say, but that's very strange because I don't feel kind of force like that in other circumstances. When you turn them the other way, they attract. There's a very analogous force, electrical force, which is the same kind of a question. And you say, that's also very weird. But you're not at all disturbed by the fact that when you put your hand on the chair, it pushes you back. But we found out by looking at it that that's the same force as a matter of fact, the electrical force, not magnetic exactly in that case, but it's the same electrical repulsions that are involved in keeping your finger away from the chair because everything's made out of its electrical forces in minor and microscopic details. There's other forces involved, but this is it's connected to electrical forces. It turns out that the magnetic and the electric force with which I wish to explain these things, this, this repulsion in the first place, is what ultimately is the deeper thing that we have to start, that we can start with, to explain many other things that looked like they were, everybody would just accept them. You know, you can't put your hand through the chair. That's taken for granted. But that you can't put your hand through the chair when looked at more closely, why? that involves these same repulsive 